Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Dying Legacy and this is the Scalebreaker build, a stamina Dragonite for solo content. If you're looking for a build that can boast incredible damage as well as incredible healing, then this is a build for you. The Scalebreaker is tuned to solo veteran dungeons and to also solo veteran arenas. And on top of that, it's going to make all world content practically laughable. As always, this is a quick build guide. We'll be going over the race, the attributes, mundus, food and potions, followed by the gear, skills, passives and champion point slotables. The info will be minimal, so I'll only be going over what's necessary. However, do feel free to comment and let me know if you want a full detailed guide or if there's anything I could do better. So with that out of the way, do sit back and enjoy as we go over the Scalebreaker build. Beginning with the race, and as always, this is entirely up to you, but but I do have a suggestion or two, starting with the Nord, if you want to be a little bit more tanky. You can also take the Orc, if you want a bit more weapon power. There's the Red Guard, if you want a bit more sustain. And you can always take the Khajiit, if you're looking for a little extra critical. For the Attributes, we're putting 64 points into Stamina, and for our Mundus Stone, we're going to be taking the Lover Mundus, for that extra physical and spell penetration. If you plan on doing some group content, you can always take the Thief Mundus Stone for an increase to your critical rating. For our food, we are using the Arteum Takeaway Broth, which is going to increase the max health, our health recovery, our stamina, and stamina recovery. This is a gold food, so it's the more expensive of the bunch. So if you're looking for something a little bit cheaper, you can always go with the Dubious Cameronian Throne, which is going to do the exact same thing with just a slight decrease in the stats. You can buy them both from the Guild Merchant, or if you have the recipes, you can make it yourself. We're also using potions on this build, and for the potions we are taking Essence of Weapon Power, which is going to give us Major Brutality, Major Savagery, Major Endurance, and also restore some Stamina. Potions are always handy to use because it will give us a quick buff when we're fighting hard to kill bosses, and it will also help with sustain. You can buy these from the Guild Merchant, or you can make them yourself. With that done, we'll move on to the gear. We are running 7 pieces of medium armor on this build, and we're also using the Maelstrom Bow, and we're also using a Ring of the Pale Order. Uh, both of these items are by no means necessary. I have options if you don't plan on using these or if you just can't get them at this moment in time. So stick around and we'll get to that. But starting with the Ring of the Pale Order with a weapon damage enchant and the Bloodthirsty Trait, you can grab this ring from the Antiquity system. This ring is going to provide healing to us when we do damage, so it's going to be incredible for the healing on the build. And while using the Ring of the Pale Order, we're going to be pairing it with one piece of a monster set. You can use this on either the head or the shoulder, it doesn't really matter. And the set in question is the Magma Incarnate set, with a Stamina Enchant and the Divine's Trait. You can pick this set up in the Dread Cellar on Veteran for the Helmet, or you can get the shoulders from the Undaunted Vendor. We are primarily using this set for the extra Magicka Recovery and Stamina Recovery we get for wearing a One Piece. However, if you want, you can just use the Bloodspawn set. Uh, that can be gotten from Spindle Clutch 1 on Veteran. That will only provide us with stamina recovery, but it is an easier set to get. And it helps all the same. However, if you're not using the Ring of the Pale Order, don't worry about it. You can just grab the Helm and the Shoulder for the Bloodspawn set, which is going to give us a small chance to generate ultimate and increase our physical and spell resistance. So that will make up for the extra defense on the build. And also moving on to the Maelstrom Bow we were talking about. The Maelstrom Bow can be gotten from Maelstrom Arena. There is a perfected version you can get from Veteran Maelstrom Arena. Uh, the perfected version will add a little bit of extra critical chance. But overall, it's not necessary because all we're looking for is the main bow stat, which is to increase the damage volley deals for each tick. And we're going to be running a weapon damage enchantment and the infuse trade on the bow. Now, if you haven't got your hands on the bow just yet, or you don't really plan on using one, you can always use the Agility Bow instead, which you can either buy from the Guild Merchant, or you can pick it up from the Mail after completing a random dungeon. Or if you prefer it, you can just double bar our weapon set that we're using on the front bar as well. And now moving on to the first five piece of our builds, starting with the Body Armors, which is going to be the Chest, Shoulders, Waist, Hands, Legs and Feet. And for this, we're running the Reliquins set which can be picked up from Cloudrest. There's a perfected version that can be gotten from Cloudrest Veteran, which adds a extra bit of stamina to the build. Doesn't matter if you're running the normal or perfected version, it's only a slight increase in stats, and you shouldn't worry about it. With the Reliquent set, your light and heavy attacks will apply a stack of harmful winds to your target for about 5 seconds, and each wind will do physical damage every 1 second. The effect itself can stack every half a second up to 10 times, 
Pairing this with the Ring of the Pale Order, we're going to get healing every second or so from this, so it plays a big advantage in the build. However, if you can't get your hands on the Reliquin set, you can always use the Selvagin's Warband, which can be gotten from the Frost Vault dungeon. Uh, this set is going to add critical chance and penetration to our build, and anytime we deal critical damage, we're going to increase our critical damage up per stack up to 10 stacks. Right, next up is our jewelry and our weapons. While using the Ring of the Pale Order, you can just slot one of these items on your shoulder or your headpiece, uh, whichever part you're not using a monster set on. And the set in question is the Pillar of Nern set, which you can find in Falkreed Hold. This set is going to add stamina, critical chance, weapon and spell damage. And when we deal damage, it's going to cause a fissure underneath our enemy that when it explodes is going to cause bleed damage to all the enemies around us. And it's also going to add a bleed dot to the enemy that will do damage over 10 seconds. And with this set, we are using a maul on the front bar with a poison weapon enchant and the precise trait. When wearing one piece on the body, we're going to be taking divines for the trait and a maximum stamina enchant. And also for the jewellery, we're going to be running a weapon damage enchant and the bloodthirsty trait. And that covers the gear and we're going to move on to the skills, starting with the front bar. First up, we're using Stampede. You can morph this from Critical Charge. You can find this in the two-handed skill tree. You will launch yourself across the earth and smash an enemy, dealing physical damage to them and all nearby enemies. This attack is always going to be a critical strike. And after you reach the target, you can just sunder the ground, or ground beneath you, dealing physical damage to all enemies in the area every one second for 15 seconds. We are also using Carve. You can morph this from Cleave. This is also in the two-handed skill tree. You will focus your strength into a mighty swing, dealing bleed damage to enemies in front of us and causing them to bleed for an additional damage over 12 seconds. And hitting a target that is already bleeding from this ability extends the duration by 10 seconds up to a maximum of 30. So this is going to be the main spam wall on the build and it's going to stack up to three times. Uh, once we use this, we'll also gain a damage shield that's going to absorb damage for six seconds. So this is our spam wall on the build as well as a defensive on the build. You want to keep this up at all times. Next up is Venomous Claw. You can morph this from Searing Strike. You can find this in the Ardent Flame Tree. Uh, you'll rake an enemy with your claws, dealing poison damage, and this will add a dot that will deal poison damage over 14 seconds. Uh, this dot will also get stronger the longer it lasts, dealing 20% more damage every two seconds. So you don't want to keep putting this on. You want to hit them once and leave it until its duration ends. We're also using Volatile Armor. You can morph this from Spiked Armor. You can find this in the Draconic Power skill line. Uh, you will release your Inner Dragon to gain Major Resolve, increasing our physical and spell resistance. You will also release a Spray of Spikes around us, causing enemies hit to take magic damage over 10 seconds. And while active, the armor returns magic damage to any enemy that uses a direct attack against us. We're going to be using the Cauterize ability. This morphs from Inferno. This can be found in the Ardent Flame skill line. While this is slotted, we'll be gaining Major Prophecy and Savagery, and this ability is also going to launch Fireballs at ourselves to heal. It'll last for 15 seconds, and a Fireball will fire every 5 seconds. For our ultimate, we are using Flawless Dawnbreaker. You can find this in the Fighter's Guild skill line. This ultimate is mainly here for the passives from the Fighter's Guild skill line. However, this will deal physical damage to the enemies in front of us, and will also do increased physical damage over 6 seconds as a dot. And after we activate it, our weapon and spell damage will be increased by 300 for 20 seconds. Now onto the back bar with our bow, starting with Endless Hail. Morph this from Volley. You can find this in the bow skill line. You'll launch a multitude of arrows into the sky that will rain down, dealing physical damage to the enemies in the target area every one second for 12 seconds. We're also using Noxious Breath. You can morph this from Fiery Breath. This can be found in the Ardent Flame skill line. You'll exhale a corrosive blast to enemies in front of us, dealing poison damage and it'll also deal additional poison damage over 14 seconds. It also afflicts enemies with major breach, which is going to reduce their physical and spell resistance. Next up is Consuming Trap. You can morph this from Soul Trap. You'll find this in the Soul Magic skill line that is gotten from the main quest line. You'll lay a claim to an enemy soul, dealing magic damage over 10 seconds. And if the affected enemy dies, you'll fill an empty soul gem and you'll also heal as well as restore magicka and stamina, depending on what your stats are. We are also using Sanguinine Altar, which can be morphed from Blood Altar. You'll find this in the Undaunted skill line. You'll sacrifice your own life to conjure a fountain of blood to apply minor lifesteal to the enemies in the area, healing yourself every one second when damaging them. And if you have got allies, this can also proc a Synergy, restoring health to them. And we're also using Echoing Vigor. You can morph this from Vigor. 
You'll let loose a battle cry, instilling yourself and allies around you if they are present, healing you for health over 10 seconds. This is an overtime heal, so you don't want to spam this. And for the back bar ultimate, we're using Standard of Might. Morph this from the Dragonite Standard, you'll find this in the Arden Flame skill line. You'll call down a battle standard, dealing flame damage every one second for 20 seconds to enemies and applying the Major Defile debuff to them, dealing their healing received and health recovery by 16%. While standing in the area, you'll increase your damage done and it'll also reduce the damage taken by 15%. And again, if you do happen to have allies present, they can also use a Synergy, dealing flame damage to the enemies in the area and immobilizing them for 5 seconds. Right, with the skills out of the way, we're going to jump straight into the passives, starting with the class passives. And first up is Ardent Flame. In here you'll find Combustion, Warmth, Searing Heat, and World and Ruin. These are going to increase the damage of our Poison and Fire attacks. They'll also help us to get Stamina and Magicka back when using those attacks. It'll also increase the length of time our damage over time effects have. Next up is the Draconic Power skill line. In here you'll find Iron Skin, Burning Heart, Elder Dragon and Scaled Armor. These are going to increase our healing, our blocking, and our defensive abilities. Next up is Earth and Hearth. In here you'll find the Eternal Mountain, Battle Roar, Mountain's Blessing, and Helping Hands. These are going to increase the duration of our Earth and Hearth abilities. And when we cast an ultimate ability, it's going to restore Magicka, Stamina, and Health, depending on the amount of ultimate's cost. And when we cast an Earth and Hearth ability, we're also going to gain Minor Brutality for 20 seconds. As well as, help, as well as help us to generate ultimate when we're in combat. And any time we use a non-stamina costing Earth and Heart ability, we'll restore stamina as well. So this line is extremely good for keeping our sustain going. We're using a two-hand on the front bar, so we'll be taking the two-handed skill line, uh, starting with Forceful, uh, Heavy Weapons, Balance Blade, Follow-Up, and Battle Rush. This is going to increase the damage our two-handed weapons do, as well as the stamina cost of our moves. We're also using a bow, so we'll be taking everything in the bow skill line, starting with long shots, accuracy, ranger, hawkeye, and hasty retreat. Again, this is going to increase the damage we do, as well as the cost of our spells and attacks. We're using seven pieces of medium armor, so we're going to be taking everything in the medium armor skill line, starting with dexterity, windwalker, improved sneak, agility, and athletics. These are going to increase our weapon and spell damage for everything that we wear. It's going to reduce the cost of our sneak. Uh, increase our stamina recovery and increase our critical damage and our critical healing done all depending on how many pieces of medium armor we're wearing next up is the fighter's guild skill line now we're only using flawless dawnbreaker so realistically all we need in here is slayer and banish the wicked as well as skill tracker however if you want you can still take intimidating presence if you plan on doing storyline content or that as it will help you fast track through quests by skipping dialogue uh, next up is the Undaunted skill line. Uh, in here you can find Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal. Uh, Undaunted Command is going to restore an extra percentage of health, stamina and magicka to us when we use a synergy. And Undaunted Metal is going to increase our max health, stamina and magicka by 2% for every type of armor we're wearing. We're only wearing medium armor so we're going to be getting a 2% increase to our stats. But at the end of the day that is a flat 2% increase so you should always take it. Next up, we're jumping into the Assault skill line. This isn't a necessary pass with a grab, but it's always a handy one to take, especially for solo content, and that is Continuous Attack. You only have to put one point into this to get the ability, and the ability is Gainer or Gain Major Gallop. Uh, that's going to increase our mount speed by 30%. That will help us get around the map and do solo things just a little bit quicker. Next up is our racial passives. Um, you're going to want to take everything that's in here, uh, no matter what race you choose. So have a quick read over them, depending on the race you chose, just to better understand what they'll do for you. The last passive I'm going to go over isn't completely necessary, but it's an extremely useful passive, and it's medicinal use. You will find this in the alchemy skill line. This will cause our potions to last 30% longer, meaning we'll have a much longer uptime on our buffs. Right, and that covers the passes. So with the passes out of the way, we're going to jump straight to the champion points, um, starting with the Warfare Tree. Uh, in here, we're going to be taking Fighting Finesse to increase our critical damage and critical healing. We're going to be taking Deadly Aim to increase our damage done with single target attacks. We're going to be taking Tomaturge to increase our damage done with damage over time effects, as we do a lot of dot damage on this build. And we're also going to be taking Master at Arms, which is going to increase the damage we do with direct damage attacks. In the fitness skill line, we're going to be taking the Boundless Vitality to increase our max health, 
Fortify to increase our armor and Rejuvenation to increase our sustain. And we're also going to be taking Bloody Renewal which is going to restore stamina to us for every kill we do. And then from there in the craft skill line, uh, again as in previous videos, it doesn't really matter what you take in here, it's all personal. So the choice is up to you and what you think is kind of best and what suits you more. Um, but for myself, what I would suggest is taking Treasure Hunter to increase the quality of items in treasure chests that we find. Ration Ear, which is going to add extra duration to our food and drinks. And Liquid Efficiency, which is going to give us a small chance not to use a potion when we use it. As well as Steed's Blessing, which is going to increase our out of combat movement speed. These are all handy just for solo content, but again, they're, they're not necessary. You can choose whatever you want. And that covers the champion points. And with that done, that's the build covered. That is the entirety of the Scalebreaker build. I hope you find it useful. Uh, I hope it wasn't too condensed. Um, if you do find it too condensed, leave a comment down below. And I can go over everything in greater detail and with a lot more care. And if you enjoyed this and you're looking for more builds like this, do like and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. I do have one of these builds up every week. I will be going through every class at some point as well as through the Stamina and Magicka variants. And of course, if you have any thoughts or recommendations, or if you just want to let me know how the build goes for you, then again, feel free to comment. Uh, if you're looking for more content, you can find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dying Legacy. And I've been Dying Legacy, and this has been the Scalebreaker build. So thanks for watching, and uh, be awesome.